you know, there are common threads here. That we're on the same team. We're all in this. And we all have a reason to be behind this. One thing I like to do is, is agree with that opening statement to a certain extent because science never knows anything for sure. Never for sure. There's always some doubt and there always has to be. You could be wrong. You could be evidence against it. Could show up later. So I'd say, yeah, there's not rock and solid proof or not certain of it, but but uh, we've got very good scientific sense of it. Yeah. Well, I that I would the avoid, avoid the science. See, that's what I knew that I had a very negative response to ask. I think I would avoid the science question because what it always boils down to with me is I get the feedback from the conservative individual that basically they're saying to me, my opinion is just as valuable as your science. <laughs> <laughs> and so there you are. So I think I'm I'm trying to learn a new way to relate. Mm -hmm. And I think I would start mm -hmm. into but let's say since there are so many people that question that this may be occurring. And it could be so significant for our children and the world that they will inherit from us. I'm feeling that it's extremely important whether this that is occurring is something that we did or something that is nature and we're going to have to survive and provide a better world for our children. I feel that it's so important that we must look into it, look at every possibility about how it might affect Will our children be able to have a car that they can go and mm -hmm. enjoy times with their families? Or are we going to be in a situation where a lot of our freedoms in the future will be curtailed? I mean, I think I'd start going there. That's, a, it, that's fantastic. <laughs> and, well, I'm just discovering this from what you said. Well, yeah, that's I, a, I have hit this stone wall. But it, and, but, I, and, and the things you did as well, you did not... You did not discount anything that was said, no. right? If you do that for anybody, regardless, right, you're going to immediately put the blinders. You're going to have to aggravate a high switch on that one. That's just blinders in general. I think perhaps even being proactive and, and acknowledging that there is a small possibility that it's not happening. I mean, 3% of global scientists don't think so. So right. whether we believe it or not isn't an issue. So if you acknowledge that their position has some degree of validity, then you could talk about you know, maybe it would be a good thing to do the smart stuff that would benefit us in either case. And here are a few examples of smart things we could do. But as, as soon as you diss their belief, you're, you're done. Yeah. And so acknowledging their belief mm -hmm. positively might be a good way to start. Yeah. I wouldn't even say the numbers because yeah. I exactly. think that that's still yeah. trying to hit them over the head with my side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, you say you could be right. That might yeah. be a good start. Yeah. That's, that's what I'm working on. Yeah. yeah, it's very yeah. important to acknowledge that the risk of not doing anything is far greater than the short-term reward of ignoring the problem. Right. Yeah, and is it I'm worth our children's future to yeah. not? Yeah, to, well, to especially because the Department of Defense, which a lot of Republicans believe in and invest in, is already making plans about mm -hmm. climate change and its impact in the U.S. and abroad. So if they're already coming up with contingency plans for how to best prepare for a world in which uh, resources are ravaged due to climate change and the why are we doing this in our own communities, like facts yeah. like that are very blatant from there. It would be good to become familiar with that plan. Yeah. So instead of throwing out, you know, my plan or somebody that agrees with my point of view's plan to discuss to throw out the, the, the DOD's plan and say, I looked at their plan. It was amazing to me that they thought it was important enough to include the possibility of this happening and that happening so that I've opened the door with a plan that they may at least to some extent look at as a, that has some credence. Actually, the, the um, military plan involves global dominance, so I don't think we actually. <laughs> <laughs> you, you could bring up the Dick Cheney rule. That, was, that might work with conservatives. <laughs> the Dick Cheney rule. You know, if there's a one percent chance of 
that happening, it's so bad we have to react to it like it's going to happen. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Actually, it's really a dark one. It's, I think, the mm-hmm. angle what we're talking about. And okay. I'd really like some more response to it, like a friend who is, she and her husband own a chain of restaurants. And she, her question about, she's remarkably open, considering that she's pretty conservative. And, but she says, I'm still not convinced that it's people that are causing the climate change, even if it's happening. I, I'm not convinced that we're doing it, and that therefore there's anything we can or should do about it. Right. And from what I know of her, I'm guessing that her elephant is responding to the fact that she thinks anything we want to do about climate change is going to affect the cost of her restaurant. Her restaurant right. is going to lose money. And that's their livelihood, her family's livelihood, and she's really concerned about that. She doesn't say it in those words. She actually has implied it a couple of times. Other kinds of issues like uh, how to treat some of her employees. And it's like, it's going to cost me money. That's and yeah, exactly. I'm going to lose business. Yep. And I thought, I don't know how to come back and get her. I don't know how to dress her elephant. You know, and I, I've been thinking about that people have been talking, and that is that if you want to talk, to the economy, there is no longer a dichotomy between developing economically or protecting ourselves, mm-hmm. protecting the environment. What we, what they have found that is that the development of renewables creates jobs, and there have been these it's not a great arrest. Yeah, but arrest. I know, but it creates jobs, and not only that, these jobs filter out to the economy. They found a huge um, increase in jobs in retail and um, anywhere that people spend money because it, except there's job growth in almost every industry except in um, manufacturing and in fossil fuels. But in building, health, food, they have found um, that, the, that um, the economy grows. Mm-hmm. The development of renewables is an economically beneficial for the country. Right. So her elephant and like many conservatives you know, it's probably being guided by a subconscious desire to not either not lose profit or not have a change in lifestyle, yes. right? So it's a, it's a scary proposition to say you, you're not going to be able to have a speedboat and two, three homes and you know potentially all these things that you like. That's what we're, that's what they they hear. So to be able to speak to that and say you know in a way that appeals to the elephant through you know those other four pillars that like what Shelley's saying, bringing up that we're going to have job growth. You know, we can we can move to alternative energies in a responsible way um, that doesn't mean a massive shift in everybody's lifestyle immediately and, and seizure of all your property and boats and, and things like that. But you know, not necessarily answering is climate change real, but just responding to their what are the base fears that they have that cause them to feel this way. It's potentially the better way to go about it. Uh, can I give you a suggestion? Yeah. I think that that person's view is a little narrower than that. I mm-hmm. think that that's our view of what their view should be. Mm-hmm. I think that I would put it in more pragmatic terms. And I would say, you know, whether this is really happening or not, there's still some debate, but certainly 51% of conservatives. Okay, throw that in there. I mean, or maybe a little later. But <laughs> I would say, uh, you know, if you look at, you know, it's so important in business to be uh, kind of on the right side of where society is uh, is looking right now. You look at Walmart. Walmart is very conservative. It's had a good business model, and yet. If you look a few years ago, they started adopting all these green practices. Mm-hmm. Now, whether you think that that's going to pan out because it's going to help us with global warming, and climate change, and all this, or whether you think it's good business, I can tell you, you look at Walmart and they made a good choice. They have been able to say, we are a business that does so and so. I'm just saying that, you know, if you want, and then say things like, you know, maybe just small just things like yeah. how people use recyclables rather than um, using things that are, are thrown away. And I believe you could really appeal to a broad spectrum of people. 
people here in our town. Look at how many people like to recycle things. Look at how many people have just, just gone board with fill in the blank of some things that's happened in the community that to get that person to see that perhaps it's a business advantage to be someone who's looked at as someone who cares about the community and uh, and her and the team was moving that way too, yeah. Yeah, well, and then throwing the team the team team one percent. No. Yeah, well, but you're saying but you're saying without using statistics, you're saying look at what Walmart's doing, look at what the rest you know potentially your business team is doing. Yeah. I think the You can yeah, probably find you a specific instance that would illustrate that. Mm -hmm. Without even such a big commitment at the beginning. You know, just some small thing. And then it's good to do Yeah. <laughs> you know, a, a, a simple argument, if, if we could, if we had a single simple argument mm -hmm. that was irrefutable, so to speak. It could challenge that person and you know, bring them into the area of reasoning where they would think about it. Uh, I'm not sure what that would be, but as soon as you string together three sentences, you think that conservatives off in another world. Uh, it's it's got to be something simple. You know? Bam. Wow, I hadn't thought of it. The thing I'd like to give when I, well, there is what, there, 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 when I encounter that argument, I say, have you ever been to Glacier National Park? And most people have never been to Glacier National Park. And I say, well, you ought to get out there soon because the glaciers are disappearing. When I was there 20 years ago, there were more glaciers than there are now. And in the next 30 years, all the glaciers are expected to disappear. Now, if that's not due to climate change, what do you think it is? Uh, you know, too many politicians with hot air? Yeah, but I think we're all changing. Yeah. yeah. Well, Can we we'll see what um, Chris Woody has to say about this? Uh, yeah, yeah. He's got a sure, pull that back up. up. He's a good man. So he, he is. Books. Could I suggest one thing before you do that? Sure. Patrick? Yeah. Uh, conservatives like the idea that America leads the world. Uh -huh. you know? Yep. Maybe Absolutely. if you if you say we we agree you might be right, but if we don't act, the Chinese are gonna beat the hell out of us in the world market on this, you know, front. Yep. We've got to move now or the Chinese we'll be speaking Chinese in school. Well there you go. <laughs> So um, this is so I'm just going to start with a little quote from Stephen Colbert, which is hilarious, and it totally plays to what we've been talking about, talking to the, the moral, talking to the elephant, or what he calls using your gut. But then it goes into something that Chris Mooney says, and Chris Mooney is a great guy. He's, he's got some some fantastic insights. But I I just wanted when he starts talking at the end of the zone, just wanted to bring up sort of the way he presents it and is he going to be changing is his goal to change any minds or is his goal just an air laundry and i think it's just sort of the air laundry mm -hmm. so i'm going to swing my numbers are ready for take a very quick break okay. do you know you have more nerve endings in your gut than you have in your head <laughs> you can look it up now I know some of you are going to say, I did look it up, and that's not true. <laughs> that's because you looked it up in a book. <laughs> Next time, look it up in your gut. You <laughs> are <laughs> okay, giving us uh, a brief gloss of the uh, essential uh, pieces in here. Uh, let, let, let's talk about this point of contention, because Jonathan, you're saying, uh, look, uh, uh, there's... We all have moral, we all sort of morally reason in the same way. We all end up in teams and then we reverse engineer um, uh, reasons to believe in what our team predisposes us to believe, what they believe, and that cuts across left and right. And you're saying, no, actually, there's something distinct right now in the nature of the both personality and institutional makeup of the American right that makes it distinctly and extremely um, hostile assignment. So, right, right. I, I agree with him that everybody reasons based on motion. 
And I agree that you can, there's experiments when you get the left to be more biased than the right if you push certain emotional buttons. So I agree with that. Nevertheless, I think there's something about the liberal psychology in its affiliation with the scientific community and its willingness to change its views over time such that you might have some liberal biases, but over time they're going to more find the truth. And I think evolution is a great example. So for instance, I'm a liberal. I think you can't understand human beings outside of evolution. All right, so clearly, maybe maybe three decades ago, I wouldn't have been comfortable feeling that way, but I missed all that, you know, and I'm, and I'm all for it. And the left, I think, has largely changed on that. But we have the right denial of evolution is over 100 years old. And it's not just, it's not just denial of little things, right? These people think that the Earth is less than 10,000 years old. And they deny, you know, they deny everything, right? So I just wanted to play that clip just because I think it, it sort of plays into what we're talking about, you know, is, what is his goal here? Like, is his goal actually to change any opinions? I don't, I don't think so. I think it's just no. sort of rally people, rally your own team, right? He's and just trying to make a point. He's just trying to make a point, and it's it's there to, to rally the left base, right? You know, yeah, they're, they're a bunch of idiots. Well, right? I don't think everything is to rally somebody. He's trying to make a point. He's trying to determine the truth. Sure. So he is making a point. I'm just saying that, like, the way the way he goes about it is, I think. Height would sit there and argue that you can make that point and make it in a way such that, like, inviting conservatives to utilize different thought processes to go about the way they make a decision, right? Versus what Mooney has just done there. He's like, if a conservative is going to watch this, he's that high switch back day, he's, first of all, he's going to be kind of like, Exactly. Yeah. So, it's going to be the one who is that, and just that, 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 which I was doing earlier, and I got to work on not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Catherine Hale dealt with that issue in her book, where she said, "Yeah, you might think that the Earth is 4,000 years old. Mm -hmm. That's fine, but climate change is still happening." Mm -hmm. And when and when we when we studied her book, I mean, she dealt with all of their all of the fundamentalist evangelical concerns with incredible respect and just dealt with them. Yes, that's Yeah, okay. No, I just sort of comment that I think Captain Hayhoe, just like Shelley said, gives that response, and I don't remember for sure when global warming, but she has all the answers. Uh, and you go back and reflect on it. Right. Yeah. Do we have those books? Can we have any of those? I don't think we that. We gave them all away. So it does a, if the person believes that the Earth is 10,000 years old, does that mean that for them, the sanctity part, that the fact that it's from the Bible and all, really is their number one moral guide point? Is it just a repositioning of, or a reprioritization of the guideposts for morality? Sure, uh, somewhat. Uh, it's, so he even sets up charts in the book. And he shows, you know, he's got the, um, you know, liberals with Karen Fairness way up here, and the rest are almost some at, at times off the charts down below. But and typically, it's more of a, it's just, it's all sort of on the same level together. Typically, for conservatives, they're all. I would never give a response to a question about sanity that I would, I would say is unimportant. I wouldn't say that that's an unimportant thing. So it's hard to. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's sort of more even. Maybe not, still not always necessarily right side. And again, it's different person by person. But yeah, it's just more, more important. Um, well, maybe you should start that argument with how old do you think the Earth is? You live at that. The Earth is not an She's not part of that crowd at all. I see. So, no, she's just Height has plenty of. Uh, Thoughts on Ted. I think the Righteous Mind, if you just type in the Righteous Mind on Google, there is a PDF of the entire book that he's posted online. So you can find it on there um, real easily. And it's, there's a lot more in there that I didn't flesh out completely, but any, any other questions or thoughts? One, or? one thing that I do when teach in my class, which is in the business college, is I point out that prop, the, the, the basic equation of business is profits equals revenue minus costs. And if you can reduce your costs or increase revenues, and you know, you were talking about people in Fayetteville might tend to 
favor businesses that are concerned about climate change or, or about conserving. So you might improve your revenues, but you might also decrease your costs by by being by conserving. I mean, it's it's the same root word as conservative. Yeah. If you can conserve resources, you can reduce your costs it's got a, it's and got increase that, your profits. It's got that double meaning too, though, right? Conserve means not using as much as I want to, right? <laughs> Which is potentially trouble. But yeah, exactly. Yeah. I thought it was really interesting how you began this discussion by saying just how much the saving and, and boxes equal in trees and I mean, when you start to see because we, we each imagine that we're not doing so much you know like I forget to take my bag into the grocery store or whatever and so you just start to put it in those terms okay you say it's not a forest mm -hmm. oh absolutely I mean I'm, and I'm not kidding I mean um, we would reduce there was a, a box that was just going in the freezer and cooler section and it was I mean we literally took a layer of paper out of it Keep the structure of the town just by removing, still by removing that layer, saving uh, you know X percent cost on on the product, and it was somewhere in the neighborhood of 700 and something trees over the course of the year, say um, the equivalent. Now some of the products are recycled, so can't get exact. But and then one of them was the yogurt cup was went from a yo plate style yogurt cup to a one that you break off like that, and just stamped there in the factory right before the product was poured in. And we literally had to put the, the amount of savings in in the class aircraft carriers because the, the you know thousands of tons doesn't add up in the mind in a way you just don't you can't relate mm -hmm. right so it's I mean, it's phenomenal phenomenal the amount of mm -hmm. material just raw material and production that goes into what we can do. Those are easy sales, but when you can save money and uh, and be conservative for the environment at the same time, anybody in the right mind is going to agree with it. The yeah. problem is when you're going to spend more money. Mm -hmm. Right, you have to look at yeah. the, yeah, the right. savings yeah. down the road. And that's yeah. sort of Walmart's uh, the issue that I have. Is, you know, I don't, having worked for them, I don't consider them good or evil. That seems to be the divide on Walmart. They are just a business entity. And their, you know, uh, their previous CEO made a statement we want to be green in so much as it is profitable. Profitable for us, but the moment it, it detracts from that bottom line, we're not going to do it. Right. Even at, even at the expense of the environment, Absolutely. Walmart might choose the lower cost. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, 100%. Because <laughs> it's a bit of a business, as it's you pointed out. Yeah. And consumers who aren't educated will go somewhere else. One way you might approach this is uh, emphasize the cost of coping with climate change. I mean, they're going to be huge. I mean, they are. I mean, in the next, mm -hmm. in the next 20 years, uh, there'll be several trillion dollars worth of infrastructure on our coast that is just going to go away. I mean, doesn't work underwater, and sea levels are rising. And you know, not only not only are sea levels rising, they're accelerating. You got to look at the second derivative. The good news is Florida will never build a public. Well, that's another thing to think. I mean, is that something to talk about? Because most of us are aware that our food systems are going to be stretched and because of um, loss of uh, viable land and because of drought and this sort of thing. So, is that something that uh, we should be bringing up? Um, talk about food systems and talk about 